Hello, I'm Nigel Wally. This is Decipher's presentation for the MediaTel Future TV advertising sessions. I'm going to be talking about the future of addressable TV in the UK. I'm going to look at the current state of play in terms of the issues as we see them, state of play with the platforms and what initiatives have been undertaken in the UK, and just flag up a little few areas at the end where we think the industry in the UK needs to change to capture all the opportunities that addressability could bring for advertising. I'm going to make a case a couple of times through this that TV, and particularly addressable TV, is very often positioned in terms of these two kind of cultures, old-fashioned TV and new digital television. I'm going to make the case that we don't find this a very helpful structure. And actually, what you'll see today is I'm going to present the arguments much more about audience versus user. And when we find them much more useful context to debate addressable TV. And the idea that with the audience context, we're dealing with groups of users, and with the user context, we're dealing with individuals and smaller devices. And I'll explain that more um, as we go through the presentation. So let's get into the slides. So I just want to elaborate a little bit on the thinking behind these two audience contexts. If we look at audiences, first of all, on large screens in lounges, we're dealing with a shared audience. We're dealing with more than one person typically, whereas on devices like phones, tablets, and laptops, it's an individual. It is much more likely that we're not logged in, whereas we are predominantly logged in when we use small screens, and that has a huge knock-on implication in terms of data and targeting, etc. It's almost impossible to run interactive formats on large shared screens, and it's only really the user devices like phones and tablets that support the new interactive formats. The big screen world needs at least a combination of audience and server measurement. So we're seeing new models appear which combine panels like Barb with server data, whereas over on the individual devices, we're dealing with individual web measurement. And then the commercial implications obviously it is much more likely that stuff on the big screen is going to be captured within deals whereas we're seeing quite a bit of the interesting activity over on the user world being done out of deal and that does have an implication for how money feeds into the into the world i also just want to reflect on the targeting options because again there is very often this assumption that big screen audience tv it just deals in national targets. And we know in the UK, with, with a few caveats, almost all broadcasters uh, are national broadcasters, and so they can only deliver big national audiences. And that's always contrasted with the internet that supposedly is this perfect world of every single user identified and able to be targeted using ad tech. And we, obviously we know that the reality is different. If we just look at TV, for instance, you know, lots of broadcasters have the ability to deliver regional targeting. And we know that most sophisticated media planners deal in day part and program choice to deliver a very targeted outcome on traditional media plans using TV. Over on the, on the web, the truth is that rather than individual IDs, a significant part of the ad tech world is actually delivering ads by attribute, not by identified user. Um, and increasingly, those attributes are at household level. So the idea that there is this, this polarity between the targeting capabilities currently on TV and the internet is, is clearly flawed. What's very exciting, though, is, is how addressability can, can add into that mix. So you know, TV is coming across and is adapting data and targeting technologies that have been developed on the web. At the same time, we must reflect that more and more internet-based stuff is, is moving towards TV, particularly as we see things like YouTube moving up onto the big screen. And addressability particularly around linear and broadcast brings extra dimensions so we talked about regional targeting increasingly we can see contextual targeting on tv and that may be let media agencies target audiences who have watched a particular program or target audiences that display certain behavioral traits around tv as well as allowing media agencies to use addressability to pick out audiences based on demographics and wealth etc things that are harder to do with existing tv programs just on, on pure geographic targeting, of course, addressability brings hyperlocal into the mix. And th this is very exciting, being able to target uh, TV audiences around very tight geographies or a tight selection of postcodes. So th you know, there's a lot of work going on in which addressability brings new dimensions to TV. But I think the important message is this is not the idea that addressability is bringing targeting for the first time onto TV. I also want to talk about where the opportunities are. On the left, the left-hand column, this is the traditional Thinkbox donut chart. Um, it uses the Barb Establishment Survey and some off-common analysis. Um, and I think the th important thing we're trying to get over here is that live TV, recorded versions of live TV, et cetera, are still a significant part of the mix across all audiences. 
We've taken a further analysis and broken it out by our two contexts, the, the big screen audience context and the, the user screen. And for us, when we're looking at where the opportunities for addressability are, you can still see that the significant area we need to focus on is the left-hand column. If we look at the right-hand column, and this is again across all audiences, SVOD and YouTube are the two biggest segments of time within this four-hour four bracket. SVOD clearly doesn't have advertising, so it's not something that's currently in, in our mix. And YouTube already has an addressable platform. We are seeing the shift of those two blocks of viewing back up onto the big screen as Netflix and new SVOD formats like Disney Plus launch on big screen audiences. So Whilst that's a significant block on the right, and we are expecting it to, to change and expecting it to drift back up on, on to the left-hand panel. But I think that weighting just explains why we're focusing very much on big screen uh, as the, the core of the opportunity for addressability. And if we look at the, the formats that are available for this new landscape for TV, traditional TV on the left obviously was historically based around nothing but linear broadcast channels, programs, ads, programs, ads. Even when recording arrived, didn't really change the advertising landscape at all. And we haven't yet seen any platform other than Sky talk significantly about the ability to target ads into recorded programs. And we do think that's going to be a growth area uh, over time, particularly given it's still about 10% of total video viewing time. Uh, so that's an area of future opportunity. Obviously, back in 2005, 2006, the internet arrived, and with it, the broadcast catch-up players bringing AVOD for the first time, initially not addressable. AVOD was sold very much as a kind of a, a, on a deal basis, and it wasn't until much later that the broadcasters brought data and addressability into their AVOD mix. And then pretty soon after the launch of AVOD, we saw the launch of streamed IP channels within the, those catch-up players, so what the industry began to call simulcast as an opportunity. And that distinction between you know, telly on the left and, and catch up on the right was one of those things which fueled this idea that there was still TV and digital in the mix. But unfortunately, you know, what happened is that the world kept changing. Very quickly, we saw on-demand telly move up onto the big screen with the launch of VOD on television platforms and, and advertising supported VOD. After that, again, we saw linear IP go up onto the big screen. And we'll talk in a minute about UView. Of course, UView has 100 IP streamed linear channels. It's not uncommon in the UK to have a television platform that receives its linear channels via a combination of broadcast and IP streaming. That's really just the, kind of the, the current reality. Over on the internet side, there we've seen the arrival of YouTube and Facebook video, short clip video supported by ads. We're seeing more innovation. So we've seen SVOD launch over on the internet. And then again, SVOD is now making the leap up onto platforms with the launch of Netflix and, and Disney Plus on platforms like IQ. But also the, the fact that we've had Amazon Prime and we've had Netflix on UView and Freeview-based smart TVs for a very long time. And we're now seeing social video moving up onto TV. So that really is the landscape for TV. For today's debate, I'm going to pull SVOD out of the mix, but that really is the suite of tools. When we look at the addressable TV landscape in the UK, this is the suite of tools. You can see why we resist any talk of TV versus digital, because A, all of this is digital, but also more importantly, up on the, the big audience context TV, there is a very strong mix of IP delivered and broadcast delivered programming. So, you know, IP is everywhere on this chart. There is, of course, one extra layer of confusion, and that is that there, unfortunately, are two versions of the ad tech landscape that we're kind of flagging up on the left of this chart. There is the version which is being built by what we call the closed platforms, so Sky and Virgin, and proprietary IP video running from their proprietary servers. And so the ad tech stacks that we're seeing being built on platforms like Sky and Virgin is, is based on their own proprietary protocols and codes. Whereas on the web-based platforms, and we're talking about platforms like Freeview Play, UView, and all of the smart TVs in the UK, we're dealing with something which is much more like the web services you'll see on your phone and your tablet. And these are web videos running from broadcaster-owned servers. So the left-hand chart is something which is very platform-centric. It's where the platforms are controlling and developing the ad tech stacks we're dealing with. And the right-hand platforms are very broadcast-centric, and it's where broadcasters are pushing the development of app-centric approaches to ad tech. And those two approaches are very, very important. Particularly when we look at the platform split in, in the UK, 
So Sky has got just under 9 million TV subscribers and lots of other subscribers for broadband and, and other services, of course. Virgin, number four. And then the web-based platforms, UView, Freeview Play, FreeSat, and, and the other smart TV worlds, which aren't quite so organized as, as Freeview Play and FreeSat. So, you know, there's our 25, 26 million homes split between those players. And wh where we look at the opportunities, therefore, if, if these are the homes in the UK, you know, we ask the question, where are the addressable TV opportunities appearing on, and also what percent of UK television viewing could be addressable. If we, if we split that by audience, you know, if we say the, you know, the pale grey box there is all linear TV in the UK, another thing we have to flag up as, as odd and unique in the UK is that 30% of all viewing of linear is still to BBC channels in which there is no advertising. So, so when we consider the addressable opportunity in the UK, we have to flag up that 30% of linear viewing does not have the ability to deliver addressable advertising. Oddly, that's not to say the BBC won't adopt addressable technologies to deliver their own promos but from the commercial world and from the agency world. It's an important limiting factor. The other thing to say is that you know, ITV channels across their full suite of channels takes about 20% of UK viewing and currently there is no linear addressable options available via ITV. Channel 4 takes 10%. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Channel 4's deal with Sky to deliver Sky Q addressability on Channel 4 in just a moment. And then there's Channel 5 and all the other pay TV channels. So that's the, the broadcast landscape in the UK. Again, there's a caveat we have to flag up. And if we look at the yellow box on the bottom left, addressability is only being delivered currently around linear and other formats on Sky and, and Virgin at the moment. So really, when we look at linear addressability, the only available options are down in that yellow box, which is about a fifth of the UK viewing landscape. We haven't included Channel 4 in, in that yellow box because it doesn't launch for another year on, on Sky Q. So in terms of linear, currently the landscape is very limited. And one of the questions we have is how can we expand that potential landscape for addressability in the UK? And I'll come back to that in just a minute. When we look at um, those channel opportunities individually, I'm going to lay it out just very slightly differently, just so I can flag up some of the initiatives in the UK. So, you know, there, there are the, the, the free to air broadcasters. They're available across all platforms in the UK. Just for our US viewers, just the thing to flag up is obviously in America, you have the out of veil system where your network channels, your equivalents of BBC One, Two, Three, and 4, are delivered out to the individual cable networks around the US with empty ad slots, the, the, the available ad slots that those local cable operators are able to use to sell local advertising. And they've been a great help in the US in the launch of addressability because they give you this ability to, to play with these empty ad spots down at local cable operator level. We don't have that in the UK. So, so it's important just to remember that it's not there. And then when we look at the pay channels thing, we have stated in the obvious is that pay channels only exist on pay TV platforms. So when we look at addressability on pay channels in a minute, we have to remember that they don't play out on Freeview, FreeSat, and other smart TVs. Um, they do play out on UView as IP channels. And so they are, there's a future opportunity for them to be exploited there. So when we look at activity in the market to date, the yellow boxes indicate the broadcast opportunity to deliver linear addressability on the Sky platform. And obviously Sky Q has been in the market about five or six years now. So it's actually a well embedded deliverer of linear addressability onto channels that Sky Media either sell, either Sky Badge channels or Sky Sold channels, um, Channel 5 in the Viacom suite. So, so that is there and, and established. More recently, Virgin did a deal with Sky to adopt elements of the Sky Q capability and build them into Virgin's own inherent ad insertion systems. Virgin themselves in the UK don't own channels. So themselves, they don't have an ad sales team. They're not out there selling addressability. But what this deal has given them is the ability to implement deals sold by Sky Media. So that if Sky Media sell an addressable campaign on a Sky channel or a Sky represented channel, the, that addressable campaign will play out wherever that channel appears in the network. So whether it appears in a Skybox or a Virgin box, that addressable campaign can be delivered. And Sky and Virgin have also agreed a reporting structure and um, a data structure so that data from Virgin Homes is additive into the data achieved in Sky Homes. So what that's done is given us almost half the market is able to receive addressable format in those two housing types.
And of course, I'm adding in Channel 4 into the mix. We're told that's going to be another year before it's fully implemented, but the same thing will happen. It will be additive Sky and Virgin. Don't yet have the um, information on who's going to sell it. We're making the assumption that Channel 4 sales will sell their own addressable campaigns and they will be implemented by the tech team at Sky AdSmart and implemented across both Sky and Virgin platform. There has been other things going on in the market. I would flag up that we have seen the UView trial for linear insertion. It's very good. The tech is their own proprietary technology and it uses a different approach to the Sky AdSmart approach. It uses IP to insert advertising into broadcast and therefore it delivers addressability under the control of the broadcasters. So rather than a platform-wide approach, as we're seeing with Sky AdSmart, on UView, it'll be a broadcaster by broadcaster approach once the technology is implemented. It's there, it's been built, it works. We're just still now waiting for the broadcasters to tell us how they're going to roll this out to market. There have been some other initiatives too. A couple of years ago, we saw ITV and Samsung and Sorensen looking at how they may insert advertising into live ITV on Samsung smart TVs. That, that test didn't come to a product. There is also quite a bit of work being done in the UK and, and pan-European looking at how all smart TVs could offer linear DAI using technology called HBBTV, which is inherent and built into all smart TVs. So the tech's being tested to deliver linear addressability onto smart TVs, again, hasn't been rolled out. I think just a couple of things to flag up. When we look at the Sky Ad Smart platform specifically, as well as being able to deliver linear, Sky also are able to use Ad Smart to deliver advertising into on demand on their set top box and also on demand into apps and, and web properties that they own. And because it's a platform wide approach in which Sky are capturing all data across all broadcasters and, and all offerings, they are able to correlate advertising campaigns on linear with advertising campaigns on demand. So linear and on demand correlated within the same campaign. And that clearly is of interest to, to some broadcasters who don't want to do just a, an on demand only um, campaign. So it's a question we always look at when we're looking at ad opportunities. Can I correlate live linear addressability with ads delivered into large screen on demand and also small screen um, on demand? Interesting question, what can a broadcaster in the UK do alone? And you know, if we look at the right-hand side of the platform, UView, Freeview Play, and, and the other smart TVs, can a broadcaster outside of Sky and Virgin deliver linear addressability into those free-to-air platforms? As I've said, some of the tech has been researched on UView and on the other smart TVs, but currently it's not live. So at the moment, Outside of Sky and Virgin in the UK, a broadcaster can't deliver linear addressability. And that's an issue that we, we really feel needs to be addressed. Of course, they can deliver addressability into their catch-up apps on big screen and also on small screen. So an individual broadcaster will claim that they can deliver addressable TV, but they will just be talking about on-demand on big screen apps and on-demand on those apps as they appear on, on small user devices. Big problem, of course, even if they could deliver linear, at the moment, they can't correlate between live and on demand. And they can't do that on, at the moment on the Sky platforms either. So you can run a campaign on a broadcaster app and you can run a parallel campaign on broadcast that appears in Sky version, but you can't correlate other than time of day and broadcast schedules. New entrants, keeping our eye on this, still in terms of numbers, very small, but you know we have to reflect Samsung are building addressable TV capability to insert ads into AVOD apps on Samsung smart TVs, and that's rolling out in the UK. And of course, Amazon is the other player in the mix, looking at delivering addressable TV using their massive data background into apps that appear on their Fire TV devices, both big screen uh, and small screen. Um, and, and that's really the, the landscape in the UK. When we look at capabilities, we, you know, we look at who can deliver over the air, who can deliver addressability into IP, who can deliver ads into recorded programs, on demand, et cetera. Our concern with the UK is that there is a huge amount of the running being driven at the moment by a single platform, Sky. And when we look at the free-to-air, it's really for us, it's a problem area. At the moment, because of the nature of the free-to-air platforms, the consortium basis by which the individual broadcasters come together to build the, these platforms, it means that there is too much emphasis on future ad innovation 
being driven at broadcaster level and not at platform level. And so we, we would make a call that in the UK, we need the broadcasters to shift emphasis from these individual projects at delivering addressability into their catch-up apps and shift some of the effort back up to platform level. And let's get a significant innovation around addressable TV up at preview play and, and at other smart TV level. And let's get that capability launched on UView at platform level. So there's a lot of work to do on the right-hand side of this, of this chart. So there we are. As you'll see, there's been a lot of work done on addressability in the UK, but there's still a lot of work to do. We have significant concerns that there's too much emphasis on the personal and user device world rather than the mainstream TV. And a lot of the audience viewing is shifting up onto to bigger shared audience TV. And so we feel the industry should be changing its focus to address that. There's also, as you saw, concerns that all of the work done to date is being done in the pay TV sector. And of course, in the UK, uniquely, we have um, just over 50% of our market, which have free to wear platforms in their homes. And at the moment, there isn't nearly enough work being done to address um, how we can innovate around advertising on the free to wear platforms. So our call to action in a way is to get the broadcasters to move their focus from innovation around their individual catch up apps to innovation in the consortia where they work together like Freeview and UView. And we would also call on the agencies to, to support that, that shift and for the agencies to put pressure on the broadcasters to focus innovation where it can do the most good, which is out on, as I say, these bigger TV platforms where the shared audiences are. And that was everything. So thank you very much for listening. And we look forward to seeing you at future media tele events.